It's true. I'm a three-time Olympian and two-time Olympic medalist. It is also true that I am 100% completely average. I am not a naturally talented athlete. I was never a prodigy. Nobody ever said to me, wow, with your raw talent, you will definitely win an Olympic medal one day. Things do not come easy to me. Most importantly, I am just like you. As a working mom, I have gone to really important business meeting with some kind of unidentified baby liquid on my shirt. I mostly work from home in my pajamas and slippers, and usually I don't brush my hair and sometimes my teeth before noon. And yes, ladies, my husband thinks that he's the boss too, but we all know who the real boss is, right? I have reflected back on my life thus far and I have achieved success beyond my wildest dreams because of what I call the gift of being average. Now, I wanna take you way back to 1992. I was sitting in front of the TV with my mom watching the Winter Olympic Games and figure skating was on. Christy Yamaguchi stepped out onto the ice and it wasn't her perfect axles or spins that impressed me. It was when she glided effortlessly across the ice with her leg held high above her head and she smiled. And her soul was shining through her smile. And for that moment, I had a connection like I had never felt before. She was extraordinary. I wanted to be extraordinary too. I wanted to be an Olympian, but I was just an average girl. I mean, I loved sports, but I wasn't great at them. I played middle school basketball and went the entire year without scoring one basket. I ran track and crossed the finish line mostly behind everybody else. And I wanted so badly to be the captain of my high school soccer team, but was never chosen. And I loved mogul skiing above all else, but truth be told, I wasn't much better at that sport either. So how in the world was I going to be extraordinary? How was I going to show the world what I was made of? That I could be an Olympian, that I too could connect with another little girl out there in the world and give her the inspiration to be extraordinary too. I don't know the exact moment when it hit me, but somewhere along the way, I knew that in order to beat my competitors, I had to work harder than them. I had to take more risks. I had to have more grit. And when I got beat, it was okay to cry, but I had to pick myself back up and try again. And I watched my friends get medals placed around their neck and I clapped and cheered. But deep down, I kept telling myself that one day, that was going to be me. And for the next decade, I kept inching my way forward. And at the 2002 Winter Olympic Games, I was a proud member of Team USA. My dream was coming true. I was an Olympian. Not exactly how I imagined it as a little girl in a sparkly figure skating outfit, but in the second coolest sport of all time, mogul skiing. The biggest honor an athlete can have is to walk into the opening ceremonies of an Olympic Games representing the greatest country in the world. And I was lucky enough to do so in Salt Lake City. As we were about to make our entrance, a TV reporter tapped me on the shoulder and he said, excuse me, miss, can you please point out Johnny Mosley, Peekaboo Street and Bodie Miller? I really need to interview them. And I said, why would you want to do that when you could interview me, Shannon Barkey, right here, right now? You are going to be so glad that you got this interview, you know, before I'm famous. And he laughed and he rolled his eyes and he moved on. And eventually he found them. And that moment shook me because I knew that I wasn't one of the star athletes that was expected to medal. But here I was at the Olympics and still not good enough in some people's eyes. But moments later, we walked out into the opening ceremonies as teammates and in my eyes, equal Olympians. I had tears in my eyes and so much inspiration in my heart. I had worked tirelessly for this opportunity to be extraordinary. The next day, as I stood in the starting gate for my Olympic mogul run, I had a huge smile on my face, knowing that this was what I had trained my whole life for. And since I was a little girl and crossing that finish line was a dream come true. And when they draped my Olympic medal around my neck, that is a moment I will never forget. 
But how come little old me, Shannon Barkey, with average athletic ability, was able to beat competitors that had far more natural talent and ability than myself? Skiers that had been expected to win in that exact moment. Why me? How was it that I went on to be number one in the world, win multiple World Cup events, and eight years later, win a second Olympic medal? And since retiring from sport, how is it that despite never being the smartest person in the room or ever graduating college, the company that I built will continue to flourish and help people succeed all across the globe? The secret, my friends, is again, the gift of being average. Those with natural talent and ability certainly have a head start in life. And for them, things are easier in the beginning. But I owe all of my success to these people because they were always the ones that were dangling the carrot that I was trying to chase. They were the ones that were setting the bar higher than I ever thought that I could reach, but eventually would jump right over. What I now know to be true is that in order to have an extraordinary performance, we must have unshakable mental, emotional, and physical strength that operate as one. So here are the gifts us average people possess when we strive to do extraordinary things. One, we approach preparation differently. We do the grueling work that our competitors are not willing to do. When others feel their training and preparation is done for the day, we stay just a little while longer. When others give up, we persevere. When we fail, lose, and feel defeated, we discover why we failed. We fix it and we get back up and we try again. When we feel like there is no way to achieve success, We seek out those to help us and we build our own path to success. When sometimes we think in our mind we can't, we absolutely believe in our soul that yes, we can. Two, we do the hard things first. I know when others do the easy stuff first, then the hard stuff seems insurmountable. And when things seem insurmountable, others simply give up not us. We set our sights on the hardest thing first, tackle that, and then all of the other tasks we accomplish propel us forward. Most oftentimes, the absolute hardest thing to do is to simply start, to commit, to do it, to dive in, to own it, to say it out loud, to be all in. Three, we recognize and seize opportunities. Most times, our opportunities are disguised as obstacles and challenges, moments in which there is no obvious solution or no way forward. These are the moments that become clear to us and we capitalize. We become at peace with our dry mouth, the butterflies in our tummies, and the sweaty palms. We silence our negative inner self-talk, our dialogue that says, no, you can't. You will fail. You are not good enough. You should give up. This moment is too big for you. We have 100% belief in ourselves. We trust in our preparation and the work that we have put in. We repeat that we will succeed. And in this moment, it is ours. And yes, we will shine our brightest self. So now I ask you, what is important to you? What do you want to accomplish? What is your Olympic moment? Will you make it happen? Will you face your fears and do it anyway? Are you going to admit to yourself that you may not be the most naturally talented or gifted, but choose to work harder than you have ever worked in your entire life and go for it? Are you gonna let other people's beliefs in your abilities stop you? Or are you going to rise above and succeed anyway? You owe it to yourself to share your very own unique gift with the world. I believe in you. You need to believe in you. Your extraordinary starts now.